This is how your easy valve arrives. Inside the carton, you'll find a set of instructions. If you require another set, they can be downloaded from our website at www.antelco.com. If you don't require the carton, put it in the recycling. This is your easy valve 4. Here's the inlet for your main water connection, and either side has two outlets for connecting your irrigation hoses. As you take off the lid, you'll see the O-ring that seals the product and keeps out dust, water and insects. Inside the box, you'll find a bag of components. In the bag is a cable gland to seal the wiring, one large and four small wire connectors for connecting cable to your solenoids, and two stainless steel screws with seals for securing the lid. You'll need a few other things to complete the wiring on your Easy Valve 4, including a suitable length of 5 core multi strand direct burial irrigation cable and a 24 volt AC irrigation controller of your choice. You will also need tools including a Phillips head screwdriver to secure the lid screws, a screwdriver to suit the screws in your controller, a pair of small round nose scissors for peeling back the outer cover of your cable, and some wire strippers for preparing the ends of your wires. Lift up all the wires that are in the easy valve and have a good look inside. You'll see down at the bottom of the box that the valves are marked 1 to 4. We'll need to keep track of these when we're wiring up the controller. You'll notice that the ends of the wires have the insulation pre-cut for your convenience. Gently remove all of these ends with a twisting motion and dispose of them. Assemble the cable gland by removing the small nut, leaving the washer in place. The washer will end up on the outside of the box. Push the cable gland through the hole in your easy valve, then replace the nut on the inside and screw to tighten. Then loosen the large nut on the outside of the box and push through your irrigation cable. Allow enough cable to work with, you can pull the excess back through the gland when you've connected your solenoids. Firstly, strip the outer sheathing off of the cable. Use the small pair of scissors to snip down each side of the outer sheathing, being careful not to cut the wires inside. Next, grasp the sides of your sheathing and peel them away to a length of about 75 millimetres. Using your scissors, you can then cut off the excess without damaging your inner wires. Then take your wire strippers and trim 15 millimetres from the end of each wire. Take one wire from each solenoid. These will connect by your common wire back to the controller. The wiring for the valves is not polarity sensitive, so you can choose either wire from each solenoid. Next, select the common wire from your cable. In some countries the common wire is white, but in Australia it's black. Bunch all these wires together and give them a twist. Take the large connector and gently insert the wires. Press down and twist the connector clockwise until hand tight. You will be able to feel when you have the right connection, but be careful to not over tighten. You will notice an excess of gel comes out as you're tightening the connector. Don't wipe it away. This is a sealant gel which gives you the waterproof seal. Wipe the gel in and around the wires and opening. You now have four wires left, one from each solenoid, and four wires in your controller cable. Using one of the small wire connectors, join the wire from solenoid one to one of the remaining coloured wires in your cable. It doesn't matter which colour you choose, but take note of this as you will need to remember it when you connect the other end of your controller. Again, push the wires in, gently twist and push down. Repeat this process for the remaining valves. Write down the solenoid numbers 1 to 4 and note which coloured wire you connected for later reference. Adjust the cable length inside the box and neatly arrange the connectors. Allow a little bit of surplus wire in case you want to reconnect something at a later date. Tighten the sealing nut on the outside of the box so it clamps down on the cable to provide a waterproof seal. Take your lid, making sure the o-ring is clean, then push it down onto the box. 
Insert your screws into the holes in the lid of the box, then use your Phillips head screwdriver to screw them into place. You have now completed the internal wiring of your Easy Valve 4. This wiring process is easier to do on the bench if possible, but if you need to do it with the valve box in the ground, remember to keep things clean as you go. Once you've decided on the location of your valve box in your garden, you'll need to connect the wires from your Easy Valve 4 back to your controller. Strip the ends of your wires ready for connection to your controller as you did with the other end or as recommended by your controller instructions. Recall which coloured wire you connected to the solenoid 1 in your valve box. In this case, we used the yellow wire. If you can't remember, you can always open the lid on your Easy Valve and double check. Take the appropriate coloured wire and screw it into the position labelled 1 on your controller. Connect your other wires according to the colours you chose when wiring the solenoids. Now connect the common wire to the controller. In this case we are using the black wire. This is the wire that is connected to four wires inside your valve box. The common position on irrigation controllers is often marked with a letter C, the letters COM or the word common. Refer to your controller instructions for further information on connections. This completes the wiring instructions for your Easy Valve 4. Further information on water connections and irrigation components can be found on the Antelco website at www.antelco.com.